Would you like to live on a greener planet? I would. I'd love to see more lush rainforests and jungles and even more diverse, abundant animal species living in those rainforests. I'd love to see people in third world countries be able to produce more abundant food more easily off their own land. A greener planet is something that most of us would like to see. How do we get to a greener planet though? And the answers will surprise you because they're probably the opposite of what you've been told. Thank you for joining me. This is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger for healthrangerscience.com. One of the first steps in re-greening the planet would be to bring more water to the land around the world. Many areas are currently deserts, obviously, because they don't have enough water or they're just barely surviving somewhere between desert and maybe grasslands. If they had more water, they could be forests. Much of the starvation around the world is due to lack of fresh water. So how do we get more water onto the land across our planet? The answer is simpler than you think. First, you have to understand where does rainfall come from? Nearly all the rain that falls out of the sky is evaporated from the world's oceans. The evaporation is powered by heat, mostly from the sun, which causes water vapors to rise into the atmosphere where they are distributed by winds. Under certain conditions of barometric pressure and temperature, raindrops condense out of the clouds and fall onto land, providing water. Well, it turns out that the easiest way to increase the wetness of the planet is to, believe it or not, increase the average global temperature. When our planet is warmer, it is wetter. More water is evaporated from the oceans because of more heat, and more rainfall falls onto the lands, providing the irrigation for reforestation, food crop production, and the reclamation of desert areas. In essence, if you'd like Earth to be more green, then you are in favor of a little bit of global warming. Global warming makes the planet more lush, more green, more wet. It's part of the regreening of the planet, which is why Earth was more lush and more green in the past when it was warmer than it is today. It's also why scientists in the 1970s and 1980s were very concerned about what they called global cooling, which they said would bring about the destruction of life across our planet. The New York Times and other mainstream media outlets warned us about global cooling in the 1970s and 1980s using almost the exact same language that they now use when warning us about global warming. But warming the planet is only one way to re-green the planet. The other way is even more powerful, and it is achieved by providing plants with what I call a miracle molecule that they depend on for life and growth and replication and abundance. This molecule is in very short supply in Earth's atmosphere. It used to exist in the atmosphere at over 15 times higher levels than what we see today. In fact, over the last 600 million years, it has been dropping precipitously to the point where it's now in short supply and many plants around our world are starving for it. This molecule is absolutely essential for photosynthesis. It's part of the process of using sunlight to create energy in plant systems. Every plant that has chlorophyll uses sunlight and this miracle molecule to stay alive. And it's made of two elements that are also part of your body and reflected in every organic molecule that you're made of, from your blood to your hormones, to your skin, to your brain cells. And it's so important for growing the plants that create the abundance of our entire food ecosystem that it's called, in its gaseous form, a greenhouse gas. Yes, I'm talking about carbon dioxide. It's so important to life on Earth that if it were reduced to zero parts per million in the atmosphere, the lands of our planet would become virtually lifeless, except for certain types of microbial life or certain types of fungi. But life as you know it would cease to exist because you, like everyone else, would starve to death without CO2. Right now, those who are pushing a narrative of man-made climate change have declared CO2 to be a pollutant. That implies that we should get rid of it. And yet, if we did get rid of it, we would all die. Earth is suffering under a CO2 shortage and a lack of rainfall in many areas. And the two answers to this, global warming and higher CO2, are exactly the things that you have been told are destroying the planet. In other words, 
you have been told exactly the opposite of what is factually and scientifically true. If you support the regreening of the Earth, then you must by definition support warming of the planet to bring more water to the lands of the Earth, as well as higher CO2 levels in the atmosphere to provide all of the plants with their molecule of life that is necessary for plants to live and thrive and grow and produce seeds and reproduce and reforest our planet and make it greener everywhere. Lastly, consider what our planet would look like if the global warming alarmists got their way and eliminated CO2 entirely from the atmosphere. All plant life as we know it would die. And not long after, all of our cities and all the inhabitants of those cities would die as well. So I'm gonna show you a few pictures here of cities that exist today with CO2 levels of 410 parts per million. And then I'll show you what those cities would look like if we eliminated CO2 completely and got rid of the so-called carbon dioxide pollutant. So take a look, here's Los Angeles today. Here's New York City. Here's Toronto, Seattle, and Tokyo. These cities right now with a little bit of CO2 in the atmosphere are thriving, they're full of life. But if we were to take away CO2 and eliminate this so-called pollutant from the atmosphere, what would these cities look like? The answer is they would be dead. Here's Los Angeles following the elimination of all carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Here's New York City, dead. This is the future Al Gore wants for New York City. Here's Toronto without CO2 in the atmosphere. Here's what Seattle would look like, lifeless and dead. And here's Tokyo following the elimination of CO2. Every major city in the world would look like this from London to Paris, to Moscow, Sydney, you name it. Every city would be a ghost town. So I ask you in summary, do you support the greening of our planet or do you support the mass genocide of the human race? Because if you support the greening of the planet, then you support global warming and you support higher levels of CO2 in the atmosphere. But if you support the mass extinction of humanity and genocide, and the complete destruction of all plant and animal life on our planet, then you support eliminating CO2 and going along with the climate change alarmists. I shouldn't even need to say this, but the climate change alarmists like Al Gore are not merely insane. They are dangerous to all life as we know it on this planet. If we let them get their way, they will bring about the next great extinction of life on our planet. Don't let them kill our world. Don't get suckered into the climate change fraud. Learn the truth about the molecule of life, carbon dioxide, and why we need more, not less, of this amazing molecule. See more educational videos on all of this and more at healthrangerscience.com.